Joining me, Jack Berkman, Republican strategist, K Street lobbyist, and host of Behind the Curtain, Saturday mornings at 10 on Newsmax TV. Also, Virginia Democratic Delegate Mark Levine catches nationally syndicated radio show Inside Scoop weekdays at 3 p.m. on MarkLevineTalk.com. Let's start in Wisconsin. Senators Ted Cruz and Bernie Sanders took home the most delegates in the latest presidential primary. Both claim momentum and the long, hard slog to New York. Is Wisconsin a turning point, Jack? It could be. I hope 12 get. I, I hope Trump gets to 1237. I hope he gets to 1137. If he's close, he can pick him up on the first ballot. But sadly, Morris, the way I do the math, I'm starting to agree with the conventional wisdom. I think what will happen is this: the establishment is using Cruz as the antidote to Trump. The party's using him to stop Trump. When they get to the convention, they're going to figure out they don't want Cruz as badly as they don't want Trump. They're going to bring in a Paul Ryan. Uh, or a Rubio, once you bring in the white knight from the outside, the whole thing breaks apart. And I think at that part, at that point, you have three Republican parties. Could be exciting. You may have multiple candidates in the November race. All these metaphors. So we've got Paul Ryan, the white knight. We've got uh, Ted Cruz as the Trojan horse representing <laughs> the establishment. Either way, Wisconsin did shake up the race on both sides of the aisle. Trump put more stock in his delegate expert, Paul Manafort, and the Democrats really went after each other. We have won, we have won seven out of eight of the recent primaries and caucuses. And she has been saying lately that she thinks that I am, quote unquote, not qualified to be president. Well, let me, let me just say in response to the secretary, Clinton. I don't believe that she is qualified. Some of his ideas just won't work because the numbers don't add up. Others won't even pass Congress or they rely on Republican governors suddenly having a conversion experience and becoming progressives. Well, in a number of important areas, he doesn't have a plan at all. Clinton went on to say she's not even sure Sanders is a Democrat. Mark, are you worried this will split the Democratic Party in the fall? Uh, I'm not. I, I think that uh, Democrats on our worst day are far more civilized and polite than Republicans on their best day. Uh, look, Bernie Sanders is behind. I think he's flailing a little bit. He actually made a classic rookie mistake. Hillary Clinton never said he wasn't qualified to be president. She raised legitimate questions about his plans and things that he didn't know very well. They were absolutely fair. And then the Washington Post used what she said and did a headline that said Clinton questioning Bernie, uh, Sanders' qualifications to be president. She never said that. He just read the headline. I can tell you, our listen to the Bernie, actual article and responded in kind. That's a rookie mistake. And it shows Bernie, a candidate who's very tired. I think this will be the high water mark of the Bernie Sanders candidacy, and Clinton will move on from here. You know, you, Jack, a lot of people have, have predicted a lot of high water marks. The only problem is the water keeps getting higher and higher for Bernie Sanders. This reminds me a little bit of George Bush and Ann Richards in the old governor's race, where she referred to him as shrub, and he always was careful to say Governor Richards. She calls him Bernie. He calls her Secretary Clinton. You'd be surprised how much that can that kind of respect can impact. No, she calls him Senator Sanders. She continues. She calls him Senator Sanders. She continues to to propound this very centrist position. She's talking about how I can work it in the middle, how I can make deals. The left-wing base of the Democratic Party doesn't want to hear that. That's rhetoric for the general election. Look, she may have begun the pivot a bit too early, Morris. She's pivoting too early. Sanders is not done away with yet. She might be surprised. Uh, meanwhile, President Obama returned to the University of Chicago Law School, where he taught for more than a decade to press his case for Supreme Court nominee Merrick Garland. If, if the question is qualifications and excellence, uh, it is uh, uniformly uh, viewed by not just Democrats, but also Republicans, those who have served him, lawyers, judges, legal scholars, members of the current Supreme Court, uh, that uh, he is as good of a judge as we have in this country right now. 
Republicans led by Senators Mitch McConnell and Charles Grassley are holding firm to their pledge not to hold a vote, but there's already been some fallout. Lindsey Graham crossed the picket line. Also, lawyers for a group of California teachers have asked the Supreme Court to hold a new argument in a major labor union case that ended in a 4-4 tie last week. Mark, your response, but first, Jack, can Republicans afford to wait here? Uh, well, they probably can't afford, but they're going to have to. If McConnell does anything else, he's simply out. I mean, they could go and turn and make Ted Cruz majority leader. Mitch McConnell's a very smart politician. He can count the votes. It doesn't matter if Lindsey Graham uh, crosses the picket line. He can't do anything on this. Look, this is a winning issue for the Democrats. Obama's on the high ground with this. The reality is, though, it doesn't matter. If they considered uh, Merrick Garland, they would vote it down. Obama knows that. The country knows that. If I were Obama, just giving some advice to the other side, one thing I might do is I might go to McConnell and say, okay, okay, why don't you describe the kind of justice you would consider? That might be an interesting PR tactic if I'm uh, qualified to give advice to uh, Obama. There was a great political cartoon showing all the months of all the days of every month and the months in the year on the Republican calendar. No, 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 no. <laughs> Mark, it's the party of no. It is the party of no, and of course I've got my constitution with me, and it says in section two of article two that the president shall nominate and buy in with the advice of the consent of the Senate, shall appoint judges of the Supreme Court. The Republicans are violating their oath to the constitution, and you can look at the entire history of the United States. You look at the depths of the Civil War, when people were fighting about important questions of slavery and whether or not states could secede from the Union, and no one ever disputed Abraham Lincoln's right to appoint Supreme Court justices. But I think they were killing each other, and yet America agrees the Constitution is the Constitution. Here's another thing maybe you can agree on this, Jack. In this political circus, I don't see the public as really caring. This is not on their radar right no, now. No, that's, that's a good point. This is not servicing Obama and his strategists. I guarantee you people like David Axelrod are very disappointed that this thing is not polling better. They had hoped to make uh, Merrick Garland some kind of rallying cry, but it's not there. They're Jack, not, in the off chance a Republican to, were to win, the one thing you have the to Democrats would filibuster them, and then we'd go down to seven justices, well, and then look, six, here's, and then here's five. The thing, this will destroy the United States. You know States as a lawyer, court. you can count on the Supreme Court, and you know as a lawyer, there's really not much to talk about. The next the next person who wins the presidency will control the court because you're going to no, have a, no, no, have the, a number of retirees. If a Republican Ginsburg wins, the Democrats should filibuster and say, we want to wait until the next president. It's only fair. All right, Let's, well, back to Mitch McConnell. Ted Cruz will not apologize for calling him a liar last summer over a deal to vote on reauthorizing the Export-Import Bank. My focus is not on Washington. That ain't going to happen. And, and if the Washington lobbyists want to see that happen, they can hold their breath a long, long time. My focus is on the American people and uniting Republicans behind a shared value, shared values and a shared vision. This comment strikes me as somewhat ironic, Jack. Cruz talks about uniting the GOP over this shared vision, but doesn't seem eager to mend fences even with his own party. Well, Ted Cruz, I like Ted Cruz's ideology. I don't think he's capable of being president for just a lot of these re reasons. I don't think he can unite the party. I don't think he could unite the country. I don't see Ted Cruz as a leader. One thing I would suggest to him, if I were giving Ted Cruz advice, one thing I would suggest in this instance is McConnell's endorsement. This might be a time to make a deal with Mitch McConnell, maybe get Get some quiet support or an endorsement that might be a road to some more delegates. Wouldn't you think he's doing that already? Because yes, it's a no-brainer that that's what he ought to be working. He on. should, but he's not. Cruz is generally doing a better job than Trump at going around and getting the delegates that are uncommitted. He's winning a lot of the ones he can, but this fight with McConnell is not helping him. I think he's missed an opportunity. And it's more than Cruz personally. He's got the best of the best on his campaign right now. It, it's not just McConnell. I mean, everyone in the Senate hates Ted Cruz. Democrats, Republicans. The one thing that unites Democrats and Republicans <laughs> is that everybody hates Ted Cruz. He called Mitch McConnell a liar. You're not supposed to do that yeah. in the Senate based on something apparently McConnell told him. Well, you private. say that, but remember, it, it, Mark, this is a guy who does not play well with others, say and it's that. why he would be a lousy You say president. that, but people have been underestimating Ted Cruz for the last 30 years for all of his life. Now he's the number two man in the Republican primary. Yeah, he doesn't have a 16 chance. others have dropped out. He's still in. He's doing pretty well. All yeah. right, the debate between gay rights and religious liberties 
parties is also splitting the GOP. The rift is on full display in states like North Carolina and Mississippi. Mark, bring us up to date here. Well, it's actually not just North Carolina, Mississippi. It happened in Virginia. It happened in the State House when I was down in Richmond. There was a bill that passed the General Assembly that said that Virginia would establish a religion, and the religion would be anti-gay religion. If you hated gay people, your religion would have preferred status over all other religions in Virginia. Now, I can pull out my Constitution again. Obviously, that violates the First Amendment. It violates the Virginia Statute of Religious Freedom. But this separates the business wing of the Republican Party from the anti-gay wing of the Republican Party because businesses know, as they're finding out in North Carolina, Mississippi, you lose business when you're big. Yeah, Jack, let me mention that because yeah. in some cases the stance over gay rights is causing states to lose jobs. This choice involving economic development and religious beliefs could reverberate down ballot this fall. Is this a lose-lose prospect for your party, uh, Jack? I think it's a, I think it's a mixed pro it's a mixed prospect. The gay issues mobilize the base. That's a great way to get out the far right. The base really comes out on these issues. Gay the gay issues might be the number one base mobilization. Not anymore, we're Jack. About business now. Not it's, anymore. It's, it, young well, Republicans. Things, young Republicans are not anti-gay. What things, about business, Jack? Well, businesses in these states. One of the things that's happening, Morrison. This is part and parcel of what I'm talking about is broader trends for the Republican Party and maybe the Democratic Party splitting apart and having four or five country, four or five parties in the country. Business is now throwing itself in with the center and even in with the left. And that, that paves the way for some very interesting changes in American politics. Remember you heard it here. It would not surprise me if in the next couple of years you see a party in this country that unites far left and far right together. All right, before we go, I'm curious about this 43-second video just released by House Speaker Paul Ryan. It looks a lot like a campaign ad. What really bothers me the most of politics these days is this notion of identity politics, that we're going to win an election by dividing people rather than inspiring people on our common humanity and our common ideals and our common culture on the things that should unify us. We all want to be prosperous. We all want to be healthy. We want everybody to succeed. We want people to reach their potential in their lives. Now, liberals and conservatives are gonna disagree with one another on that. No problem, that's what this is all about. So let's have a battle of ideas. Let's have a contest of whose ideas are better and why our ideas are better. All right, so Mark, let's hear your ideas on that message. Is Ryan running for president? Of course he is. You know, I don't remember Speaker John Boehner or Speaker Nancy Pelosi putting out campaign videos. He is absolutely running for president. You see, like, the hazy focus and the soft music, and Paul Ryan's running. That was his, his announcement Jack, right there. make some news, make a prediction. Uh, Paul Ryan is the guy who never wanted anything but seems to get everything. He's very much he's very much running. This reminds me of Caesar and Mark Antony in the garden. Oh, no, I'm unworthy. I'm unworthy of the crown. <laughs> Uh, I think Paul Ryan would very much like to uh, get on the ballot in November. All right, Jack Berkman, Republican strategist, Mark Levine, Democratic strategist and lawmaker, the best political panel on TV. Thanks to you both. Thank you, Thanks, Mark. Thank you, Mark. Jack.